Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's the Rambling Movie Minute. I'm Sorg, uh, at Sorgatron on the Twitter, uh, ready uh, to get into it in our little digital water cooler at this corner of the internet. With me is the usual uh, master of movie ceremonies here, Malengo, at Rambling Mango on the Twitters. How you doing, sir? Hey, I'm good. How you guys doing? Good, good, sir. Good, sir. See any good movies? Uh, not any in theaters. I had to go to a wedding this weekend, so... <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anything really in theaters besides, like, I was supposed to see Captain America again, but that fell through. And I wanted to see Draft Day, but not that much. So <laughs> that's kind of what it, that's kind of how the theaters went down for me. Wow. How about you, Mad Mike from the Bronx, Mad Mike4883 on the Twitter? Is how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I wasn't able to see anything in the mo- in the theaters this weekend because it was my birthday weekend, so I was celebrating. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, Malengo, uh, what happened at the movies this weekend? Yeah, we'll do a quick rundown. Mm-hmm. Uh, Captain America stayed strong um, in the movie. Obviously, $41.3 million. Uh, Rio 2, which I've heard was supposed to be like a good sequel to if you like seeing birds on screen sing. Um, That came in second. The uh, Rotten Tomato uh, ratings on it weren't strong at all, just shy of 50%. So I don't know what that's saying. Um, In Oculus, the, uh, I guess the scary movie franchise from, I think, I want to say the guys that did, um, uh, who are these guys? It, well, it's it's actually it's from the WWE and Amy Bond. Yeah, it, it's a WWE film because they were really talking it up on Raw this week, uh, making number three, beating Draft Day, of all yeah, things. That's actually pretty impressive. That what with the people that were attached to that movie? Um, well, that's there the... are problems with Draft Day from the beginning. The star team that they're they're highlighting is Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> So that and that and the NFL draft doesn't take place for another three weeks or so. Yeah, it seems like a weird time to say, "Hey, let's talk about football." So Oculus, the the horror movies have generally done well if they're if they're pretty well positioned. Like the teenagers go out and and, and check this kind of stuff out, especially if it's the only horror movie out. And it has to be getting a little bit of of extra oomph from having you know the the former Doctor Who girl on there. Oh uh, yeah. Well, I didn't. I didn't know. I forgot that she was in it. That's actually pretty interesting. Um, but even more, also the uh, Katie uh, Sackhoff. I, I hope I didn't butcher her name. Um, from Battlestar Galactica. Okay. Is in it as well, I feel like she's more of a like geeks type of. Let's go check out this movie because I think she plays the, the crazy mother though. Okay. Uh, I don't know. This is really the first major thing that um, Karen Gillum has done since Doctor Who. Like, between this and Guardians, that's really all she's been working on, I think. Oh, she's in Guardians, too. Yeah. Nice. Nice. She's a bald bounty hunter by the name of Nebula, I believe. Really? Yes. That could be fun. Yeah, the the whole uh, shtick last year where they had the Guardians panel and she threw her wig out into the crowd. She shaved her head for the movie. Oh, nice. Uh, but Draft Day, I mean, Draft Day had, had a lot of star power with Kevin Costner, Dennis Leary, uh, uh, Jennifer Gardner is in it, I think. Yep. Um, I know it's been all over, like, you know, the talk shows this past week. So. I'm pretty sure The Daily Show had two people on from mm-hmm. that movie last like, week. I had both uh, Gardner and, and Leary, I believe. Yeah. So, um, uh, but I, I think, you know, that's one of those films. It'll... it'll fine in post you know i couldn't have spent, spent that much on on a film like this the word the most expensive pro- thing probably is using the nfl license in the long run so yeah i mean i don't know i i like i like uh what's his face from the movie um leary the out there. but i don't know like i said i'm interested in it because i like football mm-hmm. and i like 
I like sports movies uh, generally centered around like uh, climatic, you know, everything's crazy and we have a crappy team and we're trying to rebuild. But it has to be based on a true story. And I, not that I'm, you know, <laughs> biased because I live in Pittsburgh, but Cleveland really hasn't done anything. So <laughs> I don't know how true of a story can really hold legs to pick somebody who is not into, you know, uh, football. But Wait, then again, to me, this ball. isn't the, the real story of Brandon Wheaton. I'm confused. Yeah. I just thought it was. <laughs> I think, if anything, Moneyball is a good example of a movie that people might not have any interest in with uh, Oakland Athletics. And then, you know, you throw Brad Pitt in there, you put a captivating story, and it did rather well compared to, you know, most sports movies of that genre. So, I don't know, I'm interested to see it. Probably not going to see it in theaters, so. though. No, no. Awesome. So. Hey, so uh, some quick movie news. Um, Fast and the Furious 7. This movie is interesting. There was an article that came out um, from the video co-pilot guys on a discussion on Paul Walker and whether or not they should use a CG version of him in the 7 movie. And in an article uh, on comingsoon.net, it states that it looks like they're going to get the aid of Paul Walker's brother. Mm -hmm. At what point does this just get too kind of going too far? <laughs> I, mean, I really body doubles. I mean, I'm, is this any weirder than like completing the crow the way they did? Except for the fact that it's already a sensitive topic in the sense that it's fast cars. And people die in fast cars, and one of their lead actors die. And in he's a fast. slated to die in a movie about fast cars, yeah. right? So, I mean, I don't know. I I don't. It's just weird. First, talking about the CG character would be weird because you know it's like, all right, CG now. That's just awkward. And then now replacing him with his brother or using the brother as like a double. I don't know. I just feel like there has to be a better way. I don't know how much of the script had to actually be rewritten for them to, you know, like that must be the issue where so um, much of it had been filmed that there's like, we need to do something because mm -hmm. at this point we can't. Can we reshoot. have some real talk here? Who actually goes to see the Fast and Furious movies for the script? That's very this true. Is true. This is true. <laughs> I mean, they go to see fast cars, Vin Diesel's bald head, The Rock's muscles, and things blow up. <laughs> That's a true point. I mean, <laughs> I like the story. No, I, I like, really don't. I, I, I don't remember hearing a adapted screenplay Oscar nods for Fast 6. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I will say, though, that if you... Besides the very first movie... The sixth movie actually had a script that was fairly decent. Now there are some unre re you know, unrealistic uh, you know, carrots in there, but compared to their other movies, it had a better script. Now, that being said, nobody goes to see the script, so yes. Uh, what else is going on? Dun dun dun. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I saw The Heat this weekend, Malengo. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, why, so, so, why, why did you do that? Well, I, I, well, I didn't go see it. I said, it was on HBO. I was looking for something to kill a Friday night here. And it was like the perfect thing. Oh, actually, I kind of fell asleep. Um, but no, uh, Sandra Bullock and... Uh, Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy. Thank you. I, I'm like the chick from Gilmore Girls. Um <laughs> That's what I know her as. That's, that's Suki. Go to for Melissa McCarthy is the chick from Gilmore Girls. She, she's Suki from Gilmore Girls. Okay. Right? Um, I, yeah, I'm not saying she isn't. I just think that. Listen, I my wife is way I think into it's the, funny. That's your go to. For that's Melissa my go to. McCarthy. Now it's like weird because she's like doing a bunch of other things and in movies and has a TV show of her own. And she was just like the friend from the goofy friend from, from Gilmore Girls. Um,. But no, it was uh, it was a fun romp. I mean, it was fun for that movie you flip on HBO just because. Um, I, I, my, 
Actually, my wife saw it in the theater with her friends on Girls' Night, uh, and and she's like, "That is great. It was a great movie." Um, and, and, and kept telling me about it afterwards. And, no, it was fun. You didn't like it, or you didn't see it? I saw all I needed to. <laughs> oh come on, Malango! I know you. You saw this. <laughs> you yeah, saw no, this. I saw it. I mean, I thought Sandra Bullock definitely held her own, and I like Melissa McCart- McCarthy, but. Her character tends to sometimes get a little overdone. A little, little, little too belligerent sometimes, right? It's like, ah, oh, come on, really. I, I don't, I don't really like Melissa McCarthy. Oh. I'm probably gonna get a lot of hate for that, but oh, no. every movie I've seen her in, it seems like she's trying to be a female Chris Farley, and it doesn't work. Well, here's the problem I that. that I can see that. Here's the problem that my wife addressed to me that now is stuck in my head. She was on Gilmore Girls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she did not play what she's playing now. So it's very, and I saw an episode of what she used to be on Gilmore Girls. I'm like, wow, she's really gone in a different direction. Yes, yes. So, I don't know. It is what it is. It pays for paychecks. Hey, there are two more things I wanted to talk about uh, real quick. One are silly reboots that, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> I call them silly reboots. Okay, wait, wait. Can, can you, can you, what do you qualify as a silly reboot? Friday the 13th. Yes. Has that already, I feel like it's already been rebooted. No. It hasn't? Has not. Man, Most, they just all went I mean, together. they keep bringing them back. Well, they did have a reboot. For Friday the oh, 13th? Oh, no, wait. No, Nightmare on Elm Street. No, they didn't. You're Nightmare thinking Nightmare on Elm Street. did, but not Friday the 13th. Yeah. Man. And I had a conversation with some uh, people at work over Expendables 3, and I had to explain to them that this is basically just an excuse to get all of those guys together and play the card of, this is an action movie, and we played action movies. And that's it. The fact but, that Roddy Piper has not been in one of those movies is... Yeah. Criminal. Criminal. Yeah. Well, you, well watching this last trailer uh, in front of Captain America, uh, I, I was just like, so so basically all these guys run into, into each other at parties and say, hey, when am I going to get in one of those movies? And they say, sure, you're in the next one. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that seems about right. And, and and it's it's definitely very self-referential. It's not entirely supposed to be a good movie, good movie. Um, it's supposed to be, hey, look what happens when we throw Wesley Snipes in with all these other guys that you watch. Kelsey Grammer, why? Um, hey, hey, he was Beast. That's he was Beast, but but still, like, but to throw all these <laughs> and guys, sword, and now the U.S. What Bir- birthday boy Alex Cars in the chat room says there was a reboot type of uh, Friday the 13th movie. There was? Uh, Back in 2009, I thought there was. He posted the IMB, IMDb for it. I have to look that up. And does, and is anybody he's, he's also disappointed that, that Tyler Perry you know, didn't start, didn't direct the la- the next Friday the 13th. <laughs> is anybody thrown off that Mel Gibson's big return to cinema is this movie? No, no, no. It's a That's a money grab thing. That's, I mean, it's supposed not, to be really going bad. Not surprised at all, really. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Hey, the last thing is uh, Chad and Tatum. Uh, you know, heartthrob to women everywhere. He might be our next Gambit. What? <sighs> I don't know how I feel about this. I, I, I'm torn. <laughs> I want to hear his accent. I think that is what's going to sell it for me because I like Channing Tatum. He's fine. I need to hear his accent because Taylor Kitsch, fine actor, but man, he did about 30 different accents in the roughly 22 minutes of screen time he got. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to, you know, call I, I, I like, I like, uh, slash film.com says Channing Tatum has taken a meeting to play Gambit. Yes. Okay. All right, I guess it's better than the nobody that did it in the last one. Um, I mean, Gambit's my favorite character, and I don't know. That's why I'm, like, torn. I don't think Chad Tatum's a bad actor, but he definitely 
pulls in a certain demographic, which I don't need. I don't think X Men really needs to go for. I think they already got that demographic. I I don't know. Sometimes he does like uh, like you know decent acting stuff where I'm like, all right, I'm I'm okay with that. And other times it's chick flicks that I've been dragged to, and I'm like, why? And then he does really bad movies like you know that one. It's just yeah. another particular, like just looking at the names that they're putting in this this uh, Days of Future Past coming out uh, shortly. Um, holy crap! All star cast because they went and built these big casts from uh, from you know the diversions they have done with the X Men in the past and the uh, the you know the X Men First Class, which had a whole like rebooted lineup of people to play the same characters, and now you just threw them all together. It's ridiculous. Now, granted, like some of them. That thing has gotten so big that I think the uh, the girl that played Rogue actually doesn't make it into the final cut of the movie. Yeah, um, no, I heard that. Yeah, I, I heard that they had to cut a couple mutants, but there's also conflicting reports saying, oh, wait, maybe now we're able to fit her in. Because Anna Paquin was on one of the promotional posters. Yes, yes. So, I mean, I would imagine they're going to try and at least get you know, a little snippet, like a little, ha ha, here's Rogue. Yeah. Like, just something. And we'll uh, see. I'm, I'm Which means, but it does mean I, we, we, we have a, a, a extended edition with all the mutants, hopefully, coming out when it comes on DVD, Blu-ray, whatever. Um, so watch out for that one. And, well, and, the, they had a um, an, ex, uh, an extended scene from it at the VMAs this, this past weekend. Mm-hmm. It was a lot of fun. It was set in the future. It wasn't set in the uh, first class timeline. It was uh, Colossus, Sunspot, or Hotspot? No, Sunspot. Um, Iceman and Kitty Pride fighting a new Mark Sentinel. Hmm. It was really, really good and made me actively more excited to see the movie. Oh, I'm very pumped to see this movie. So, yeah. Hey, I just, <laughs> I just saw something that is annoying. Um, so my two favorite, well, besides the original three, I have, like, certain diehard movies that I really like. The last one was not one of those. A Good Day to Die Hard. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of rough. <laughs> so I just saw that Samuel Jackson may be returning in a Die Hard 6 involving John McClane's character and Samuel Jackson. Why not? Why not wait, at this point? Wait, wait. I, I mean, Jackson? No, I, I, the diehards are as ridiculous as and self, self-referential self as the Expendable movies at this point. But the arc on the Expendable movies has, has never gone up. It's been like, if anything, it's dipped, but it's always been on like that flat playing ground. I feel like Die Hard has gone up and then they came back with like, I thought, like, the one where uh, they go cyber warfare, I actually like that one. A lot of people disagree. Mm -hmm. They would say that, you know, the crazy New York one was the last good one. But still, I feel like the arc went up, and then we get (laughs) Die Hard, you know, or another day to Die Hard crap where then our arc dips. I don't see how bringing – does Samuel L. Jackson even need this? Like (laughs) – Hey, this Samuel L. Uh, Alex Cars in the chat room says it's in Samuel L. Jock's, Samuel L. Jackson's contract to be in every third Die Hard film. I can't remember. Was it was that one really called A Good Day to Die Hard? Yes, it was. Uh, it was so yeah. weird. Yeah, that's where they're, I'm, they're I'm literally okay just Sam throwing Jackson hearts on the board. Why not? Why not? The yeah. Only, the only thing that can make it horrible is if Sam Jackson's character has a son and it's Kevin Hart. Oh, no. And because I have said that now, it will probably happen. And I will hate myself. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, oh, it's somewhere out there. If you think about it, it kind of works out. Happen. If you look at him. I don't get it. It's crazy. Anyway, movies I saw. Um, I saw The Intern. 
or the internship. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, you know what? Okay, I'm curious about this because I just watched. Uh, I've watched the first two episodes of Silicon Valley on HBO, and I kind of and somebody said there was something that connected the two of them. Uh, so I, I I didn't get an opportunity. I, I still want to watch the internship. So what what do I have to look forward to, Malengo? I don't I don't know if much. The whole time I'm watching this, I'm like, there's no way Google's like this. And, yeah. I don't well, know. Sure. I Again, it looks like Vince Vaughn just knew somebody who knew somebody and was like, this would be a great idea. And Vince Vaughn was like, all right. He's like, he's on the credits for producing, directing, and something else. So it's like, I don't know. I, Sorg? It's Sorg. Netflix right now. Sorg, I think did it's you on- like Wedding Crashers? I oh, did. Gosh. Yeah, I like Wedding Crashers. I like, yeah, yeah, I like do, Wedding Crashers. Do you like Wedding Google? Crashers? I'm a fan of Google. I like I like Google things. You'll yeah, enjoy I like, the movie. I like Google things. It's Google Crashers. It's Google Crashers? Google it's Crashers. Like Wedding Crashers That's amazing. Better. To put a good point, though, there's a lot of, there are a lot of good good things in the movie. Like, points in the movie where I was like, ah, oh, that's, that's interesting. Like, and I'm not going to give any away because, Mike, you said you wanted to watch it. Mm-hmm. But there, there are a lot of points where, or a lot of moments where I was like, ah, oh, that, that's cool. But it, I don't know, I think it digresses. And then the, the kid that plays the villain, I kind of don't know why Max uh, Mahela? Mingela? I don't know. I'm probably butchering his name. Uh, this kid, I don't get I don't get why he's he's a good actor. I just don't really mm-hmm. whatever. He was in the social network. So he was one of the uh, the two brothers and their 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 other guy. He was the that other guy. So, of course, he plays again in another social-type movie. Awesome. Anyway, that's that. That's the movie I saw. Awesome. Um, ben, Mike, you said you didn't see any movies. Because I of... didn't, but I saw more footage for the Ninja Turtles movie. Oh, interesting. And um, there's, there's a shot of Splinter. Okay, and, and we were and it looked like you squaring off against the shredder. Okay, or someone in a shredder costume. Huh. So, so I'm okay with that. And Michelangelo looked like he had a rocket-powered skateboard. Which toys? <laughs> that reminds me. I uh, sent out a tweet earlier this week on the extended footage for Guardians of the Galaxy, and that's yeah. another movie where I am continually. Getting excited for. Mm-hmm. Got ooga ooga chaka ooga 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 chaka. So so how does wait? So how does Splinter look in this? Um, we only you only see a little bit of him from the back, but it definitely looks like Ooh, the. Um, I just saw it. I just saw it. Like, Hold on. It looks a little bit more like the animated version of the new cartoon. Okay. Okay. Then you see it Which for a I'm second. I'm fine there. with. I like that. I like that character. It looks like it, does he have like a big like like you know beard thing going on? Yeah. Okay. Is that what the new one does? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the new one has that too. But um, I hope they call the rocket powered skateboard the cheap skate. <laughs> nice. Because if they're going to bring in uh, Vernon from the cartoon, they may as well bring in the toys from the 80s as well. Wow. If they wow. call it the cheap skate, I'm entirely on board. Nice. Um, so uh, from, from the chat, uh, Killer Cr- uh, Crazy Krause. Killer Kraus. Uh, so uh, let us know. Frozen was a good movie. Yep. I, I still haven't seen it. I, still need to I still stand by. You could skip the first forty minutes. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, Malengo, yes. That is bad. That is bad for business. Skip, so. skip till you see Olaf, and then all happiness happens. No. Well, I'm not going to deny that Olaf isn't one of the better parts of the movie. But, Sorg, if you like old school Disney singing. I'm, I'm going to have to go. I don't know about the singing part, but I guess I'm going to have to go hit bliss this thing this weekend. Yes. Lango, yes, no, will. from Alex. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Crazy Krause, no. Yeah. Malengo, I, I, you, you are totally in the wrong. <laughs> totally in the wrong because guess what? We all want to build a snowman. 
Uh, I can get behind that. We all yeah, want to build a snowman. I, I stand and by. Besides, that's what makes, if you that's fast what makes forward through the first though. 40 minutes, you miss Let It Go, which is awesome. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's okay, but oh my God. I, still stand, I still stand by my point. You don't Technically, get any you're sitting, so you're a liar. I sit by my point. You get no comedy <laughs> until you see a, the awesome snowman. And then the whole movie turns around from there. I uh, feel like it becomes 100 times better. But you were one of those guys who watched show. Lion King for Timon and Pumbaa, people. weren't you? What's that? You were one of those guys who watched Lion King for Timon and Pumbaa, weren't you? I'm sure you loved Eddie Murphy and Mulan. Ah! No, I, I actually, actually, I just got, because my birthday was also last week, I picked up one of the uh, uh, special editions for The Lion King, and I actually skipped the Timon and Puma part. Oh, what's wrong with you? Oh I went to the God. death, and then I went to the end. You need, you need, you need a Disneyectomy. Like, <laughs> some, something about you is wrong. Uh, Something about did, you, you skipped Timon and Pumbaa? I mean, I did watch a little bit of the, uh, you know, the No Worries, but I skipped it pretty much. Oh, my God. Do you love Do you love Aladdin for Gilbert Gottfried's voice? Like, no. Is that where we're at? In, uh, uh, what's the one? Where, in where in Little Mermaid, seen? do you skip to the scuttle scenes? No, in uh, Aladdin... The best part is when the first song, when they're trapped inside the tomb. A thing. friend like me? Oh, no, no, no. When? Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, a friend yeah. like me. Yes, I like that song. And oh my god, oh, we're so so far apart on all of this. <laughs> I mean, I, I, so I agree on a friend like me, but I, I disagree on everything else you have going on over there. So <laughs> so far apart, man. Oh. oh man, it's great! I like love, I think I you just need to go to Orlando and live in the Magic Kingdom for a week, and then come back to me when you have your when you become a real boy. No, no he's gonna no. skip. He's gonna no. skip all the parts and go straight to the Capaneo. Probably. Oh, you're right. You're right. <laughs> 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 uh, I still think Lion King. I would have to look at that. That's what we should do. Our top three. No, I don't. I don't want to talk Disney anymore. No, no, we can't stop talk Disney anymore. <laughs> now that they own everything. Well, we could talk Marvel, which is <laughs> oh wait, that's Disney. Disney. That's Disney. <laughs> All we right, what's coming up? What's, hey, hey, Malengo, oh, wait, what's coming up in the theaters this weekend? Oh yeah, this weekend. Is there anything I should be getting uh, out there for? Mm, unless you care about seeing Johnny Depp not play Johnny Depp, nope. You can see this was this Transcendence. Transcendence which, is opening up this, which kind of reminded me of Chain Reaction. Is uh, this just like him, like not her, but him? Ooh. When people want to bang uh, in, a, in AI. Mm. No, from what I can tell, it's artificial intelligence gone too far type thing i don't know this i don't i don't understand johnny depp anymore but <laughs> did you ever Morgan be, Freeman will be in it let's be honest so paul bentley or bet bentley i i butchered his name i'm sorry Chachi. wait paul bentley yes um we have a much more important story to talk about paul bentley involved Ooh. because, because he revealed today that he's going to be the vision really Yes. And for those of you who don't know who Paul Bettany is, he is the voice of Jarvis. So if that doesn't tell you something about Avengers 2, you're not paying attention. Wow. <laughs> That's interesting. Yes. Interesting and awesome. That movie is going to be one that I, I have not... I think the last movie that I went to see a midnight showing was The Matrix. The Age of, <laughs> of Ultron, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I will call off work so that I can see this movie. There's a lot building to it, isn't there? I mean, I mean, we had our first kind of combination, and, and now, you know, 
it's gonna be the what the ninth movie in the series plus no uh cap two was the ninth movie that was the ninth so this this is gonna be the eleventh movie in the series yes is this is basically a part eleven of the marvel (laughs) universe well, it took um, it took over Harry Potter as the highest grossing franchise of all time. It's halfway to James Bond and makes more sense. Yes, Ant Man is awesome. after Al- uh, Avengers Two. Alex Cars. That's crazy, absolutely crazy. Malengo, what do you got for us to go out it on? Uh, that's it. I mean, that's the movie that I. I mean, if you if you really care about Sorry. movies, that's Drop the one the I say to check it out. Um, besides that, you know, what we're watching, uh, right now, I'm behind on Game of Thrones, but there's only two episodes oh, in. Oh, man, you need to catch up. <laughs> Holy crap. You so, need to catch uh, up to on Game, Game of Thrones episode. and never invite George R. R. Martin to your wedding. <laughs> <laughs> never, ever do it. Oh, man. Never so, do it. So, yep. so, wait, wait, wait. Uh, we gotta do a spoiler zone after real quick. Mike, Mike, no, yes. this this is loose enough. So, are you? Can you safely say that any wedding in Game of Thrones pretty much goes as well as? Oh, uh, don't say anything. As no. a WWE wedding, I would say WWE weddings go better. I, in this uh, case, I'd say they go better. I, I think the track they record better. is they go better. Uh, uh, Malango, if you see a wedding... There was one where the bride was... All I'm saying over. is if you see a wedding happen, you need to hide your kids. Oh, hide geez. your wife, hide your husband, hide your wedding guests. Because <laughs> George R. R. Martin is... George R. R. Wedding? Is he not married? Does he just wedding. hate he's people getting weddings. together? Maybe the whole crux of Game of Thrones is... Tra- J, what, whatever his freak his name is, just hates love. Probably. <laughs> I figured out the Game of Thrones. Probably. Well, I don't necessarily think he hates love because I think a lot of people love what happens at his wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, guys. I guys, think he's a little screwed up. Mad Mike, you can talk Game of Thrones with him at Mad Mike four eight eight three. Join us. I haven't from, read the book, so don't spoil anything. From up there in the New York City area, uh, <laughs> and also Malango from around here in Pittsburgh. Yes, it's snowing right now. At Rambling Mango. Winter's coming. Winter's coming. Yeah, it came back <laughs> in Pittsburgh, didn't it? And, of course, I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters telling me to watch movies. You know what movies I should watch, especially if they're on HBO. Very sad that I see the internship is on uh, Cinemax and on HBO. It wasn't good enough for HBO. <laughs> is that what's happening here? <laughs> so... With that, guys, again, check everything out. Uh, the show's on uh, SorgatronMedia.com. You can check us out on YouTube, on Stitcher, on Spreaker, on iTunes as well. Uh, any format you want to get there. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week. We do this about 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time at SorgatronMedia.com. There's a link for the live stream, and you can join us in the chat room. Just like Kill It. God, Crazy Krause. Uh, Chachi, Alex Cars, uh, Wheels, and Kelly Kyle have uh, for this edition uh, with the Malengo No. Malengo No. So until then, we'll see you guys next week. Go watch some movies.